Hello, my name is Selena. And my name's Theoni, and you are listening to Piping Hot. Welcome back to another episode of Piping Hot. I hope everyone is doing great. Uh, Theoni and I are doing fantastic. <laughs> yep, she's doing really, not sarcastic at all, we're doing really well. No. Actually, <laughs> we're doing really well. No, I, I was just telling Selena before we started, I'm just so tired, and for some reason, I've just been in a mood this week. Like, yeah. nothing, it's not even like one thing where I can be like, oh, that happened, or oh, I'm in a bad mood because of this, or whatever. I'm just literally tired. I feel unmotivated. I yeah. just, it's just a weird week. I blame it on the moon. Yeah, no. The, it's the full moon. That's, that's even, what we'll blame it on. Yeah, no. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but how are you? I'm what? good. I'm I'm good. You're doing you're doing great. Thank you Even so much for asking. Even the way I said that was so fucking annoying. Girl. What? No. How are you? <laughs> okay, that was annoying. That, that was, was annoying. <laughs> Kidding. It was. Uh, anyway. Um. No, I'm doing good. I before we started recording, I was just like trying to think of what I've been up to, but I haven't been up to really anything which again is fine like I'm taking advantage of this like slower kind of workload um I've been reading not as crazy as I have but I've been reading still I'm making revisions on my book and my goal is to send it out to another beta reader by the end of this week at the latest like (laughs) I'm just trying to like turn it out as fast as I can so you're trying to finish a whole nother revision by then no I'm gonna piece it to them so it's like I probably will have the first 10 chapters ready to go and share it with them but as I as they read I'll keep revising and keep adding chapters to the document if that makes sense so it's just like piecing it to them but I want it to I want to get it into their hands so that they so that I have feedback to constantly like improve and stuff like dang it's just a well-oiled machine over here you know yeah no it sounds like it like you have your process if it works for you it works for you girl yeah so i'm i'm excited about that hopefully i can do it um and then i went to go get my bangs cut yesterday so i'm really happy to have them because they were growing out so long that they looked like curtain bangs which i don't hate but i've now been so like I prefer the full-on bangs, like the full-on wispy bangs mm-hmm. compared to current bangs that, like, I need them now. Yeah, no, I get you. <laughs> yeah, I – that was the one annoying thing about bangs is, like, I feel like you just had to cut them so consistently. Yeah. So. How are you? I mean, other than just having a weird week. Any other updates? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> How is your sleep <laughs> study going? Oh, well, didn't I tell you? I turned it in and they said they only got six minutes of data. So I have to go through and do it all again. Wait, Somehow I what? fucked it up. Mm-hmm. <gasps> oh, no. Shut up. Mm-hmm. So now I have shut to do it all again. <laughs> shut up. Isn't that fun? <laughs> six minutes of data. <laughs> Literally, I was like, I wasn't even asleep. So... Oh my gosh, was like the setup weird? Like I know you were talking about how like it's there was like all this instructions and stuff. Well, I think what happened is I accidentally unclicked it just a little when I was trying to tighten it around like my chest and I think it like unclicked, but then I clicked it back in, but I think that might have messed it up. Oh. And I didn't got really it. think much of it at the time. Got but, it. Okay. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. That's Damn. that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. So just that's really fun. And work is great. And yeah. <laughs> just living life, vibing no, over here. No, literally. Adulthood. No, Ugh. seriously. I was thinking, I really want to go on a trip. I feel like I've just <sighs> deprived of that. Like my sister was in california this past week for a food conference her work oh, that's fun yeah her work sent her out there and she got like all this food and like for this expo and stuff and like she was in california and i'm like damn that sounds so nice no like, that literally sounds so nice what right the heck? 
What are you drinking today? Water. <laughs> Very nice. Dehydrated. Um, I, yeah, but I almost ran out. So. Do you want to go get more? No, I have a Diet Coke here, too. Oh, very so, nice. Yeah. I've been, like, going back and forth a little bit. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I need the caffeine as well. What are you drinking today? I am drinking um, tea that I got from Target. It's a Good & Gather brand, and it's, like, an immunity boost or whatever because I'm still Ooh. feeling kind of crappy Jeez, from last that's week. That's, like, the second week now. Right? I know, and I'm – at this point, I'm, like, pissed because I'm, yeah. like, <laughs> I'm, you just like, want to feel good. No, truly. Like, it's, I, like, the headache's gone. I don't, I, I can talk now without my voice and throat feeling like I'm dying. But my nose is what is giving me fucking problems because mm. I feel so stuffy. And I'm, like, what the heck? <laughs> I really feel like there's something in the air lately because so many people I'm talking to have been feeling kind of sick lately. Oh, yeah. Or just kind of off, you know? Yeah. I don't know. So, I mean, not like this tea is going to fucking cure me or anything. Like, No, you can pretend it does. Yeah. It's like a placebo. Yeah, exactly. I yawned through that entire sentence. Hopefully you guys can understand what I was saying because, <laughs> like, there's a high chance you did not. I, I understood it, so Thanks. you're good. That's what matters. That's what matters. <laughs> what are you reading, watching, listening to, consuming? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> um, reading. So, like I said, I was reading. I'm not reading as fast as I was, like, last week or whatever, but I have finished a couple of books. Because I am back on my revision train with mm. my book, I... And back to reading young adult uh, fantasy. Nice. Um, and I think I might bounce back to some contemporary reads later on this month. But um, back to young adult fantasies. So the first one that I read was Year of the Reaper by Makai Lucher, I think is how you say her name. Yeah. It's a standalone young adult fantasy. And it was so good. Like, wow. I was so impressed and, like, captured. I was like, this is so good. Like, it, I don't know. It was just so good. Well, I feel like standalones are so interesting because then you're just building a whole world for one book. And it just makes you think, like, how do you capture a whole world and a whole yes. story and a whole character arc in one book? Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. And I was just like, not that I needed more or less or whatever, but, like, the way that she concluded it all as a standalone was like good and I loved it and it's just nice. oh, it's so good um the next book that I read um uh, is called A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lynn hmm. which is another young adult fantasy it is like two books two of my favorite books combined into one like and it has those vibes and so I was super excited to read it and unfortunately it felt very very flat for me like I was just really disappointed because I was like why are we like why are we wasting all this time doing yeah. this stuff and then it finally picks up at the last hundred pages but at that point I'm not even invested anymore I'm like no. I don't care I don't I'm care I'm surprised you finished it you see the thing is, is that I have to finish okay I'm the same way but some okay. people aren't oh, I like can't yeah. DNF books no me neither um they have to be like super super bad Mm -hmm. um, but even then, I still push through. <laughs> um, and then the other book that I read is called Last of the Talons by Sophie Kim. Um, that one was fun. The banter was really good. It was almost like an enemies to lovers kind of thing. Um, and it was super fun. The main love interest was like so up my alley. Like I <laughs> like I love him. Nice. Um I think it was just too long. It could have been cut in half mm. and it would have been fine. That's the worst when things drag on. You're yeah. like, okay, let's keep it moving here. Yeah, yeah. So those are the books that I have been reading. How about Very you? Nice. I actually have not read this week. Wow. When I, when I tell you I've been in a <gasps> funk, I've been in a funk. Wow, Theoni. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I am. I'm like not. I think... <laughs> I think this is, like, the first week in a year that you, like, have not read anything. I know. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, it's... I don't know why. I don't know if I'm in a slump or what's yeah. going on. But, like, I just... I think I was reading so many books, like, a book yeah. a day that I think my brain just, like, needed 
a break, you know? So. No, I definitely feel that. And you've been burning through books so fast that, like, I'm not surprised because that's yeah. so much content. No, literally so so much stuff and I want to yeah. actually I want to teach myself to slow down a little bit when I read mm. just in general because I want to be able to comprehend more you okay know? yeah yeah so I think <laughs> that's gonna be my challenge for myself mm. coming up yeah. but I'm gonna try to read a little bit this week but I would nice. also love to kind of like maybe read a little less and put a little more back into my writing because yeah I kind of want to focus on that since I've been kind of unmotivated to do either if I was gonna be motivated to do one I would rather have it be my book yeah no that makes it like allocate the time somewhere else into like activity that you really want to invest in that that makes sense yeah exactly so nice wow I am like shook it I know I'm shook it I know (laughs) I'm shook it for myself I feel like we've reversed Cause like now I'm reading a lot and like you're not. That's weird. This Girl, is weird. No, this is not. Something is wrong in the yeah. world. We're living in some alternate universe. Yes. I don't know what is going on. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. What are you watching? What am I watching? So I am watching Daisy Jones and the Six. I've only watched episode four, so I still need to watch episode five and six. I know. I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. That's so annoying of you because I really <gasps> wanted to talk about it no, with you today. Stop. I don't. I just like I need to digest it. Like I, I can't. Get it. I, get I can't it. binge because I want. I like almost feel the need to stretch it out because I don't even want it to end. Like that is my problem. No, I. Also, I'm not annoyed with you, actually. I'm just really eager <laughs> yeah. to talk to you about it. Yes. But that show stresses me out like no other. Yeah. I have to take pauses when I watch it, but I also have to keep watching because I need to know. Yes. You have no idea what's coming. Okay. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes. Um, And then what else am I watching? So Jack and I watch episode three of The Last of Us, which was fantastic. Like, wow. episode one and two was like, fine like you know world building you're getting used to the characters blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. episode three was so good like I was floored by episode three and I'm so excited to keep watching it again it's just one of those shows where it's like I can't binge it just because it's so heavy Um, oh yeah so we're taking it pretty slow but episode three was fantastic okay nice yeah and then the last thing, too, is that we're still watching some Studio Ghibli films on nice. HBO Max. So. Very nice. But, yeah, what are you watching? Well, the latest three episodes of Daisy Jones and the Six, of mm-hmm. course. Okay. Which I'll comment on that later because people on our TikTok were saying that, like, oh, I love Eddie and the TV show and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I just have it read, like, the most – or or maybe I haven't watched the – most recent three episodes and so maybe i'll like him more or like something well talk about it once you watch it okay no i don't know eddie is in on my shit list forever i don't care the tv show can't redeem him i would rather have like warren or graham too i would take graham any day i would take graham any day <laughs> yeah i like, would he's so nice <laughs> yes that's like, like my type i like nice no yes yeah and yeah. he's talented too he is I, I just, like, Eddie's, like, on the bottom of my list. You know what I mean? Like, he's just, like, I don't yeah, really care no, for him. Also, also you know this. I just don't like the actor who plays Eddie. God, so. I know. He's, yeah. He's annoying. But, so I'm watching that, and I'm okay. also watching the newest season of Next in Fashion on Netflix, because it finally <gasps> came out. No way! Yes! <gasps> yeah, I have, so I've been I watching I didn't know that. that. Yeah, I have to so watch you it. gotta watch it. It's really, really good. It's really good. Oh, my good. gosh! Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, it's been a while since season one. Mm -hmm. It has. And I will say I really like Gigi Hadid and Tan as like co-hosts. I really like them together. Oh, I didn't know she was a co-host for season two. Yeah, because they, Alexa Chung, I don't know, maybe she got the boot, I'm not sure. And now it's Gigi in her place. Oh, Mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. Okay, yeah, I will definitely have to watch that because I loved season one. It's so good. (laughs) It's really good. There's some parts that make me want to cry. Yes. It's crazy. (laughs) It's crazy, but it's really, really good. What are you listening to? Well, one of the things I've been listening to we'll talk about today. Um, Let me check my playlist. Please hold. Random songs I've been listening to that have 
really nothing to do with anything. Okay. Um, but I have been listening to Spectrum by Florence and the Machine. It's a mm. really good song. It's really old, but I really like it for some reason. Yeah. Um, I've been listening to some Rihanna for some reason. Nice. And then I've also been, or like I kind of rediscovered Wasting All These Tears by Cassidy Pope. I don't know why. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm at this week. Just some oldies, <laughs> but some goodies. Yeah, no. Yeah. Very nice. What are you listening to? What am I listening to? So I am listening to my R&B mix on Spotify. Because like Spotify makes like those like for you playlists so it's like your discover weekly or whatever um and so i was listening to my pop mix but then i was like oh wait i should jump to my r&b mix um and that's been really really good nice um i've actually been listening to rare by selena gomez as well her it's like a great album it is fantastic like i haven't listened to it in this in so long and i'm just like vibing with it it's so good yeah, it shouldn't have flopped as hard as it did. Did I think it was her best album? No, but yeah. did it deserve to flop? I don't think so. Yes, I, I agree with all of that. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing that I've been listening to is Miley Cyrus's new album, but we'll talk about that later. Yes. Um, What are you consuming? Nothing really that exciting because it's yeah. Orthodox Lent for me, which you know. Yeah. So I've been eating like a lot of substitutes for things. But the one thing I will say is that it is harder or it's easier to do than you think to not eat like meat, dairy, fish. And I do think I want to challenge myself more because there's still so many things you can snack on, yeah. so many substitutes you can do that I feel like I'm still eating normal, just not quite the things that I want to be eating. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so yeah. I want to try to challenge myself a little more this week. But um, I have been eating a lot of fake chicken nuggets fake chicken nuggets yep i have the morning good. star ones they're actually pretty good good <laughs> a lot of fake chicken nuggets <laughs> that's my life maybe that's why i've been so depressed so oh, i've been eating fake chicken nuggets yeah not yeah. actual chicken nuggets fake chicken yeah nuggets. literally <laughs> that's a sad reality <laughs> it is what have you been consuming Nothing much. I've been kind of in a funk, too. Like, I don't know what I want to cook. I've been so in the mood not to cook lately, so I've been eating like shit. But yep. um, I hung out with friends last night, and she made us dinner, and she made us, like, a chicken tortellini pasta <gasps> with, like, a garlic and herb sauce, and it was really good. That sounds delicious. Oh, my God. It was so good. Ugh. Yum. Yeah. I love yeah. when people cook for me because then it's yeah. homemade, but you don't have to cook it for yourself. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I literally hate cooking. I really do. Yeah. No. Oh it's God. just, it's so much time, like so time consuming. God, I, why would I want to spend 20 years cutting up a fucking pepper? I'd rather just order <laughs> Domino's. No, it's, my problem is that you, you cook. You eat for five minutes because I inhale it and then I have to clean? Yep. You're telling me I have to clean? Oh, no. See, I clean as I go. Oh, see, I'm too messy for that. Because mm. I'm like, I just want to cook it as fast as I can. Fair <laughs> enough. Because I hate cooking. <laughs> you know what you should try to do? You should see like or look on Pinterest or like TikTok for like one sheet meals or like one pan whatever. Yeah. You know, or even like the baked pasta or like random things like that because then you don't really get as many things dirty. Because you just yes. put it all in one thing. Yeah, no, I've been thinking about that or even like a slow cooker, something in the, like the slow cooker, but. Why don't I use my freaking crock pot? <laughs> yes. That honestly. Yeah, but even to be honest, like I think it goes to show that even like a one sheet pan meal or a crock pot is so big for me right now. Yes. That it, it goes to say that like I'm not in the space to cook right now. No, literally. Like, truly. Like that's even too much for me. <laughs> The bare oh minimum. No, literally. <laughs> the bare minimum is too much. That's true. Okay, I think that was it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So cool. pop culture? Yeah, let's do pop culture. Alrighty. I only have a few things. Okay. So it was released, I think, last week that the From Blood and Ash book series is being turned into a TV series by Amazon Prime. It's literally going to be an episode of I Have a Question. Ugh. Yes. And no, then it's going to be another episode of like... I like to be stabbed. You yes. what? Yeah. Ugh. 
like okay or like keep threatening to stab me like yeah, i find literally. it so sexy <laughs> like it's gonna be well okay because it's amazon prime right mm-hmm. and daisy jones and the six and it happened no daisy jones and the six and what's the the summer i, the turned, summer pretty. I turned pretty those adaptions have been great so a part of me is like okay amazon prime can turn a book into a tv show Mm -hmm. it is now the book factor that we need to deal with because it's not the best book to turn into a tv show you know not but uh, they gotta cast castile right yeah and a part of me is like hoping that they don't fuck up but it's not like high stakes as with akatar like they could they could fuck up castile and poppy and i'd be like you know what whatever but if it's like reese or anyone else i would be so pissed so i mean it's like not as high stakes but i'm still excited me too i feel the exact same way actually yeah yeah um so i don't know i don't know i (laughs) i don't know i don't know i just you already know this but like the series unfortunately fell off for me so it's like Mm -hmm. i haven't been reading or whatever so i'm intrigued to see what they do with it Yeah, it kind of fell off for me, too. And I Mm -hmm. never got into, like, the prequel about Nick Dose and all Mm -hmm. that, um, which I've heard is, like, actually better. Yep, I've heard that, too. But I just, I can't with the editing. And it just, some of the writing feels a little juvenile. Yep. So that's okay. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to go into it with, like, very just, like, whatever expectations. Yes. And hopefully I'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, same, same. Um, in other book related news, Crescent City 3 finally got a release date. Yes. And it's next year, 2024. Are you kidding me? January 30th. Yeah. I don't care if it's January. It's 2024. I need it this year. Like, that's my problem. I'm so annoyed. I just don't (laughs) understand how it took so long. I mean, I think part of it is the expectations for this book are probably higher than any other book she's released so far. Oh, 100%. So, like... Book talk and quarantine has really, really shot her sales and her books into literally like the in the entire universe. Like it wasn't, it didn't get this mainstream until book talk. Mm-mm. And so I definitely understand like the different pressure that this book now has, considering mm-hmm. how it ends. Literally. So I don't want to wait that long, yeah. but honestly, I've been contemplating a Throne of Glass reread and like oh, Crescent yeah. City and all of that because I reread Akatar a little while ago. Yep. So maybe now to hold me over, I'll reread. Yeah. But because I never have before. Yeah. So, that would be fun. Yeah, I think so. A part of me is like, I want it this year, right? Because it's we got Hosab last year, right? Mm-hmm. Or two or whatever it was. Another part of me is like you take your time and you make it as best as you can because I need it to be amazing. No, exactly. Like, but here's the thing. If it's incredible, which I have no doubt it will be, it's Mm -hmm. like we're not even going to remember how long of a wait this felt because then we're going to just be so happy to have that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, my next one. Pictures of Glenn Powell and Sydney Sweeney from their new rom-com came out, along with a synopsis about what the movie is about. And I'm really excited because you know how much I love Glenn Powell. But it's interesting because it's very much a rom-com, like a Mm -hmm. very classic rom-com. They're old college friends who come back for a friend's wedding and they pretend to like fake date during the the wedding festivities or whatever so i mean very classic rom-com you know i'm i'm really excited because i saw that like premise come out too and i saw the pictures and i'm really excited but it's one of those things i just need to see their chemistry on screen to get on board because like as i know them right now i feel a little like uneasy or like i just don't know what to expect but I am I am hoping it's really good because the premise sounds like something I would really like. So, oh, definitely. I yeah, I really, really hope that it turns out good. (laughs) Me too. Me too. (laughs) Fun fact, the Kardashians, none of them are attending the Met Gala. (gasps) What? Wintour said none of them get to attend the Met Gala. Wait, wait, Mm -hmm. wait, why? Oh my gosh, why? That's crazy. I don't know. I don't know exactly why, but none of them are going to the Met Gala. And I think part of it, I mean, Kim did kind of ruin Marilyn's dress, so. 
Yeah. There's pictures of it now, and you can tell by the seam in the back, it's, like, really frayed. Like, mm. she she messed up. She messed up. Um, but, yeah, I don't know why they're just banned. But, but then they're probably going to let all these influencers and things come. Yeah. So then it makes... I don't know. We'll see. It's interesting because last Met Gala was the most Kardashian-Jenner attendance that we've ever seen, like, mm-hmm. historically. So it's interesting that, like, the year before, most of them, literally most of them were all there. Yeah. No, they all were there. They all were. Because Chloe, yeah. Chloe did decide last minute to go. So, yes, they were all there. And it speaks a lot to how none of them are going this year. Wow. Yeah. So I wonder why they just don't get an invite. It's so interesting to me. Oh, my gosh. I'm so intrigued. I'm know, so intrigued. I can't wait for the next season of the Kardashians to same, know the tea. Same. <laughs> I have, like, three other pop culture things. Okay. So Sean Mendes and Sabrina Carpenter left Miley Cyrus's listening slash launch party together. And they look so cute together. I am... I'm so into it. Me too. I am so into it. I feel like from what we've seen, Sabrina's type, I feel like he fits her type very well. Like oh, he's 100%. almost like a little bit of a grown up version of Joshua Bassett in yes, some ways. I agree. And like, I just want him to be with someone. I I just want them both to be happy. Yeah. And they no. look they are like such a beautiful couple. So I'm I'm here for it if it's no, real. Truly. They make such a good couple. Like mm-hmm. I oh, I'm here for it. I'm here for Same. it. Same. Oh. My next one is that Jennifer Lawrence's newest movie trailer dropped. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen it. I don't know what the movie title is, but all I've heard is that it's like a weird kind of icky commentary about how an older woman is basically like trying to seduce a minor. And it's just like the weirdest thing. Like sometimes I think I'm like, how did these movies get like greenlit? Like I want to talk to the executives. Wait, she's trying to seduce a minor. I saw the I saw the trailer for it. Yes. Yeah, so I it's basic. Something? It's basically like I think like his parents or someone hires her to like give him an experience before he goes to college. Isn't that weird? Like, what? I'm like, why do we need these movies? Like, we no, no one's asking for them. Like, I don't understand. That's so weird. I know. It makes me feel icky, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but am I going to watch it? Probably, because now I'm just very <laughs> curious. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, and then my last one is that Cole Sprouse was on the Call Her Daddy podcast and mm. basically blasted Lily Reinhardt about all this, like, shit and like it truly i think he was trying to like get people on his side but basically i lost like all respect for him because i'm like really why are you why are you airing out your dirty laundry like this when your relationship has been buried for so long like it was another thing with the whole Haley when Haley bieber went on call her daddy and all she talked about was selena and justin and all this stuff i'm like why are we Still yeah. talking about this stuff. Like, I, know. I don't understand. Like, they need to stay relevant so badly that they need to dig up old drama. And I'm like, I don't understand. That's so unfortunate. Like, no yeah. one cares. And no, no. that's what people don't realize. Like, it just makes you look bad to talk about someone else like that. Like, yeah. just let it be. Yeah. Dang. I love Lily, though, so. <laughs> yeah, so screw you, Cole. All right, that is all that I have for pop culture. So, should we get into our topic of the day? Yes, let's do it. Okay, Selena, what are we talking about today? So, today we are talking about Miley Cyrus's newest album, Endless Summer Vacation, right? Mm-hmm. That's the name. Okay, no, I you got it. I saw I the hesitation. <laughs> yeah. I literally just like guessed because I was like, I know it's summer. I, there's endless and then there's something else yeah you're like in <laughs> summer endless vacation something yeah. like that yeah uh, which was released this past friday march 10th so um yeah i'm intrigued to hear your thoughts on it yeah i'm excited to talk about it too and i'm gonna be honest just i think i'll start with a few overall thoughts okay i really was not impressed and i really, really hate to say that i did not like it I really didn't. I huh. I honestly got really bored listening <gasps> through it. I thought 
I thought it felt kind of forced. I thought the songs all felt kind of like derivative of other songs. And that was just a really big shock to me because that's just not Miley to me. And I had such high hopes yeah. for this and it just fell really flat to me. There's a possibility that I could listen to it more and it'll grow mm -hmm. on me because I know that like that happens sometimes. But yeah. I just like thought it felt really weird and I just did not like it. How interesting. Wow. Mm -hmm. How interesting. So like what remind me again, like what were you expecting? Because I know we talked about it last week, but I forgot. Like what kind of sound would you have her rather go down? Well, I think here's the thing. Did the vibe of the whole album fit together? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, it was very clear the sound that she was going for, mm -hmm. and it felt consistent. So yeah. I'll give her that. But I think it just didn't feel unique, and it felt like some of the production mm. it tried to add in was, like, just weird, and it was, like, trying so hard to be unique that it was just weird. And, like, mm. I... I and the lyrics really didn't feel that, like, intriguing to me mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Yeah. So I guess I don't know what I would have wanted to expect because I feel like Got Miley it. can do whatever she wants and she's always going to do whatever she wants. So, like, yeah. I fully respect if this is the album she wanted to make, that's the album she wanted to make. But yeah. for me, it just, it felt really boring. Wow. That is so interesting. Yeah. I And I feel pretty wow. strongly about it and I don't know why. Wow. Yeah. So wow. how do you feel about it? I love it. <laughs> the more I listen to it, the more I love it. Like it's mm. – at first I was like, oh, this is like different for Miley. Like it, it – I think with the past couple of albums that she's released, it, it does feel very different. But it's not so out of bounds that like I, I couldn't – I couldn't not believe that it was like Miley. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was it was just on the outside of the border where I was like, oh yeah, I can definitely see her do this. But the more that I listen to it, the more I love it. Like I was listening to it like um, earlier this afternoon and I was just vibing with it. And again, I think cohesively as an album, it it does it does come across like the whole vibe very yeah. very well and yeah. like i i really really like that um i think one of my notes was like it feels like rolling down your windows and like driving through yeah. the spring or summer it feels like that yeah um, for sure but no i i really like it we never have different opinions i know that's so weird i know that but is like, really weird but yeah i think Again, I think she accomplished what she was going for yeah. well. So I give her that. Yeah. But just for my personal preference, I did not like it. So that's not to say that it's not like a good album per yeah. se, but like my taste, I did not like it. Oh, yeah, no, so definitely. Like, but yeah, that that's a thing. I still don't think Miley could do wrong, but it's just yeah. like there's so many other albums of hers that I would rather listen to. Yes, I guess. nope, that makes so. sense. It's so funny because that's how I felt about positions with ariana grande mm. and now i listen to it all the time like that's my yeah. go-to album well that's what i wonder it's just yeah. like maybe the more i listen to this it, yeah. i'll grow to like it more like who's to say but yeah because i remember we had when positions came out we had texted each other and we were discussing it and i hated mm -hmm. positions i hated positions yeah. uh, uh, uh. well it, it's one of those things where that one felt a little out of the realm for ariana too like oh yeah. i remember when we first i think when we first listened to it we were both like oh she could do so much more like yes! blah 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 and then you listen to it more and it's like no she did so much more yeah we were did. just dumb <laughs> you, you know, know? <laughs> so like yeah i don't know maybe i just need time to like respect yeah. it more but Maybe. Time time will tell. Yeah, time will tell. Okay, do we want to discuss our, like, three favorite songs? Yes. Okay. So my third favorite song is Thousand, Mi Thousand Miles featuring Brandy Carlisle. I just thought their voices fit really well, and it really felt yes. like a Brandy Carlisle song. I think that was such a smart person to have on that song with mm -hmm. her. Um, and I also feel like Brandy Carlisle fit the... Uh, 
vibe of the album well so again of all the collabs i'm sure you could do it felt very fitting just like on plastic hearts she had a lot of collabs that made sense yes. for that album so i really yep. appreciated that and i just thought their harmonies in the chorus were really really beautiful um yeah and yeah i just thought it was a very easy like peaceful listen yeah no that song is so good and again mm-hmm. i feel like right it doesn't feel like a Miley song, but it's also like in her vicinity that she can do it. And then yeah. she did it really well. Exactly. You know, I like agree. it's not like it's not like my go to jerk reaction of like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a Miley song. It's not. But she did it and she executed it so well. My third favorite song on the album is Muddy Feet. And it's funny you say that the production felt random because I loved the production. It felt mm. really really different from anything that she's done and I I could definitely tell that like she was trying to experiment and I I personally think that it paid off but um the only reason why I like Muddy Feet is because the tea is hot and I'm here Mm. for it and I think Miley needs that space to kind of now understand what has all happened with her and Liam Mm. and I I'm here for her for her to heal and release these songs. Yeah. No, I I totally hear you. And I will say Muddy Feet was probably like my fourth favorite song. Mm, But it didn't quite make it because I really like Sia a lot. Yeah. And I really like her songwriting and her melodies. And I think she always writes great songs. But to me, compared to other Sia and Miley songs, I would think that the two of them together, I think it's just like I had such high expectations when I saw their names together. So, again, maybe it's the expectations thing that yeah. like, keeps messing me up. But, um, I will but say yeah, I, the tea was good in this yeah, song, for sure. I will say I agree because, like, when I saw Sia, I was like, oh, I didn't know Sia was on this album, mm-hmm. which I was super excited about. And the same thing that happened for Midnight's by Taylor Swift when I saw that Lana Del Rey was on the mm-hmm. album. I was like, oh, my gosh, Lana's on the album. Like, I'm so excited. But it was just like like where are you like you could yeah. I can't even hear you I can't yeah. <laughs> like this so, doesn't even sound like your song especially with the Sia like muddy feet I was like this doesn't feel like a Sia song but mm-hmm. I don't know so my number two favorite song sorry if this is basic I put flowers okay it was my second favorite <laughs> song I I still Very nice. I feel like at this point it's getting a bit overplayed mm-hmm. but I do really like the song itself I think the lyrics, the way she took it from Bruno Mars, like all that thing about it was just so clever. Mm-hmm. And and that's, that's especially since that was a single, that kind of like thought is what I was hoping for the rest of the album. And I guess mm. I didn't feel like I got that as much. Yeah. Um, But that song still, to me, feels really thought out. And I really like that. So Hot take, Flowers is my least favorite song on the album. Interesting. Yeah. I just don't I don't like it I think she could have done more with it like yeah. it's it's funny because it's almost I think of flowers like fast times by Sabrina Carpenter and I love fast times. I know I don't like so. fast times <laughs> <laughs> um, okay my second favorite song on her album is jaded fun fact I did not like the song when I first heard it because I was like oh, I don't, I don't know. I just wasn't vibing with it. And then I listened to it again and I was like, okay, wait, (laughs) wait, I think I could, I think I could get on board. And it's interesting because I saw a video of her performing Jaded Live. Mm. And it's so, what I find interesting is that she sounds better live than her studio album. Like Mm. I would rather have an album of all of her live performances versus a studio album because she sounds so incredible live where it's like i don't even want the jaded studio version i want the jaded live performance yeah that's what i want i i agree with that because i feel like again and maybe this is my problem i feel like the the live versions are often a little bit simplified in some ways in some of the instrumentals and it's more like raw instruments versus these yes. weird effects and stuff and i just think someone with a voice like miley cyrus and stuff like that like you don't yeah. need that weird shit that i heard on this album yeah and that i think is my issue with it mm, but got it's it. interesting you say that because jaded was my number one favorite song oh my gosh yeah i think i think 
that one the production didn't feel weird it felt yeah. simple but like also like unique enough that it yes. fit the song yeah. and like the lyrics to me just hit really really hard yeah and i i thought it was by far the most successful song on the album all that should have been her single like i think that should have been her single well maybe it'll be one of her next ones okay yeah because we'll i see. i love it like it's such it's such a miley song like i i love it and her it vocals is. are so good in it like yeah. oh, i love it yeah see yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> so what's your number one song so my number one is going to be controversial with you but is it's handstand I think the production is great because I can't even – when I first listened to it, I was like, where is this song even going? And the thing is, too, is that, like, songs have a structure. But I love mm-hmm. that for Handstand, she, like, threw that out the window and was like, no, I'm just going to do whatever I want. Is the Handstand the one where they talk about aliens and shit? Um, I don't know. Because I don't even remember. Let me play it quick. Okay. I hated this song. <laughs> I loved it. <gasps> I loved it. Like, it's so out of bounds for her. Like, I would never expected her to produce a song like that. And I love it. I think it's so sassy in, like, the weirdest way. But I, when I first listened to it, I was like, I don't even know where this song is going to go, what's going to happen next. And it was super fun. See, those are the reasons why I don't like it. it oh, just yeah. Didn't feel, it felt like there are so many parts that didn't connect. It yeah. was trying so hard to be, like unique that it was just like what am i listening to like this yeah. doesn't even feel like a song <laughs> yeah. but like i will say like you said it definitely took some risks it doesn't sound like anything she's done before yeah so that i can agree with <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe how different of opinions we have this time around that's I know. crazy i know this is very weird yeah very weird <laughs> Okay, do we want to move into our three favorite lyrics? Yes. For my favorite lyrics, I didn't put them in order of least favorite to favorite. Same. Yeah. But I just kind of have like my three favorite little lyrics. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you start this time? I will start. So my first favorite lyric is from Muddy Feet. I will agree with you that this album wasn't as lyrically to my standards. Like I love lyrical songs like Mm -hmm. the more thought you need to put into it the more I love it like Mm -hmm. well yeah (laughs) and I think that speaks to the writer in you oh yeah yeah yeah. like I don't like the less straightforward you are the more I love it (laughs) um but for Muddy Feet I gasp when I when I heard this lyric and it's you smell like perfume that I didn't purchase now I know why you've been closing the curtains and I was like say it Miley Fucking say it. Say it. Sing it from the rooftops. Because I want to know. That is crazy. Because it tells you everything I need to know. Yes. In such a succinct way. Yes, exactly. And that's why it's so brilliant. But that's what I mean. In this album, I feel like there were such lyrics that stood out to me so much. And then in comparison to the other ones, I was like, I wish all of the lyrics could be as brilliant as these little mm. snippets I'm getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That makes sense. Um, that's a good lyric. Yes. That's a good lyric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is one from Jaded. Two of my favorite lyrics are from Jaded, actually. Perfect. <laughs> um, one of them is, oh, isn't it a shame it ended like that? Said goodbye forever, but you never unpacked. <laughs> I literally have that as my next favorite lyric. I love it. I just feel like that's so brilliant and how many people can relate to that where it's like you're looking at this relationship and it ended poorly and you're like just looking back and reminiscing on like all the things where it went wrong yeah but then it's like you finally had enough so you're like peace out i'm done with this but then it's like even though that person's done with it there's still a part of them that's hanging on and then you're fucking irritated that they're hanging on yeah you know yeah like who can't relate to that I'm triggered, honestly. (laughs) Like, that's annoying. No, truly. No, yeah. That, oh, Jaded in itself is just so good. Like, so good. Yeah, no, it is. It is. But why was that one of your favorite lyrics? Oh, just because I think it says so much. And it's, like, again, relatable in a sense if you're looking at, you know, obviously their relationship, Miley Mm -hmm. and um, Liam. Everything happened. 
kind of in a vacuum really fast. And it's just so interesting to be on the other side of things and be like, hey, now that I'm looking at it, we actually never really talked about what happened. Yeah. We never addressed anything. And I think this song was just her way of like, just kind of like finally putting it away. And I'm like, you know what? Good for you, Miley. (laughs) No, literally. And I think kind of speaking to your like first favorite lyric and this lyric I think they both tell a story in like two lines. Yeah. And that says a lot, I think. Oh, yeah. So this is my last favorite lyric. It's the second verse of Wonder Woman, which I think is so interesting because Wonder Woman feels like a country song to me. Mm. And I feel like she should have leaned more into the country. But I think if she was if she was looking at it as a vibe overall, like I now understand why she wouldn't have like turned it country all the way. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, But the second verse says, she's a won't stop woman, hours on her hands, all the pain is polished, all the tears are planned. And I'm like, oh my God, don't call me out. It's like, (laughs) wow. I was like, that's insane. But also, again, looking at like her career and the fallout with her and Liam, like, she just had to pick up and go. Like, she had mm-hmm. to act like she was totally fine, that nothing was amiss or whatever. Um, and that takes a toll. Like, I can't – I just – ugh, I, like, feel for her. Like, wow. I know. She really said a lot about that relationship that I think a lot of people didn't expect. Oh, 100%. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So my second favorite lyric, um, it's also from Jaded. Okay. It says – I won't lie, it won't be easy when somebody new is on your body. I'll change my number and keep your t-shirt. I don't mind, it's torn up and faded. (laughs) I don't know, (laughs) it it says everything it needs to say. Oh, yeah. I feel like compared to the other lyrics, it's a little bit more, like, literal. Yep. But, like... It still hits. It still hits because it's like... It's just very honest in the sense where it's like, it's so much easier to be angry and like be like, oh, I'm good. Like I found myself like flowers where she's like, I can buy myself flowers, like blah, blah, blah. And then in this one, she's like, it won't be easy. So it's like Mm -hmm. the whole other side of like the breakup. And I think I think it's so good to show all those different sides because it's never just one emotion for a breakup. You know, it's a roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that one. Very nice. Okay. And then my last favorite lyric is from Muddy Feet, actually, which is interesting. But it said, back and forth, always questioning my questioning. Get the fuck out of my head with that shit. Get the fuck out of my bed with that shit. I I feel like when I like really thought about that again, some of these lyrics, I was like, oh boy, I, it just, it really hit differently. And I think like always questioning my questioning like that alone that's gaslighting th- no like it's literally gaslighting it's, in one line like you bring I know. up something and that's something i feel like maybe because of who i am as a person i feel like that's happened so many times mm-hmm. in my life where like i will bring up something to someone because i'm upset about it and by the end of the conversation somehow i'm the one apologizing and i was yes. like this wasn't about you though exactly yeah so no. that oh my god i know the way that she just like <sighs> captured that in that line it's just so good it's so good that lyric shook me it did yeah it did, it did. <laughs> so anyways Overall, I guess I could say, like, there were a lot of standout moments in the lyrics or yeah. even in some of the songs. But overall, I was pretty disappointed. But again, maybe that's a sign of a good album is, like, when it can be picked apart so much and people yeah. have so much to say about it and that, like, we have such different opinions. Yeah. No, you definitely. Know? I think I'm still definitely going to play it in the background. Mm. I-, I really like the vibe of the album. Like, mm. I really do. Um, but again, it just feels... Almost outside of bounds for Miley, but like in a good way. Yeah, yeah. I can agree with that. I yeah. think, and I don't think it would have been a Miley album if it wasn't different from the one before, if it wasn't trying something yes. new. So like in that sense, good for her. Yeah. Because like I wouldn't want her to do something she's done before because that just doesn't seem like a Miley thing to do. No, she. Um, you can't like box her in. You exactly. know, and she doesn't want to be boxed in, which we, yeah. we know from this album. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know? 100%. 100%. <sighs> All right. So, Theoni. Yes. Do you want to tell our listeners what our topic for next week is? 
Our topic next week is a surprise. (laughs) We're going to talk about a movie. And you'll see what movie it is next week. Yeah, so come come and join us and find out what movie we discuss. The suspense might kill you. Yeah. But that's okay. Truly. You can do this. I believe in you. Um, But yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.